afterwards you shake hands and go, that was good, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playing the good guy is boring. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when you say typecast, the operative word is cats. <laughs> Um, so I have a question for Al, for Turney. Um, a lot of the scenes that you had were with Carter, very intense, personal. Um, you started out as supposedly, you know, just a, another detective working with her as a colleague. And then you had, it turned out you were obviously an HR operative. And especially near the end, you had a very intense scene with her in the precinct when you basically call her, you know, you little girl, you stay in your place. It was very raw and emotional to us to watch. How was that scene for you to, with her? That was a good scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you know, I mean, acting in general, it, it, if you're doing it well, you're just kind of there. You're kind of temporarily believing what you're doing. And, um, She's a really excellent actress. I don't even have to tell me about that. I mean, she's been doing excellent work for a long time. So it's just kind of, um, it was just really present. It was, you make it truthful to yourself and you just do it. So I don't even think that much about it. So, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I make it like all about who I'm talking to about her. I really don't know how to answer that question. I just kind of do it. I try and become that person make that moment real, open my mouth and say the words, and that's about the extent of it, and let my brain and imagination just kick off. You know? I don't know. Stay out of the way. Yeah. Okay. And then there was the kind of turning around when she ended up killing you. Yeah. Don't you, remind me. <laughs> but you proved yourself at the very end as, I don't know if it's necessarily a good guy, but... Well, see, the audience thinks that I was pointing to the guy that really, I was just trying to get more oxygen. <laughs> yes, yes, I finally tried to do the right thing. Just, you know, maybe I'd go to heaven at the last minute. <laughs> and I had a question for Bobby. Um, you know, you had some major scenes with Carter, and that were just epic. And I'm wondering, if did you do a lot of those stunts yourself? in that fight scene with him in the dark? Uh, and how was it working with him with the, with the fighting? And yeah, I um, um, did a lot of the, maybe three quarters of the uh, scene. Um, uh, I trained in karate for 20 some odd, 25 years. And so Jim knew that, uh, the stunt coordinator, um, Gibson. Thing is. Yeah, uh, he knew that. I'd worked with him 25 years ago. Um, Jim's a very proficient fighter um, in terms of stunts because you can get hurt. People did get hurt on our show. You could take them. Well, you know. I fought him to a draw twice and shot him twice. <laughs> Another great scene that we all enjoyed is the firewall at the end when there was a big shootout in the, in the garage scene and it was just like a personal vendetta then. And I always wondered how was um, Simmons the only one who walked away? The like, HR people were all getting arrested, but you just sauntered away and never got picked up. <laughs> and you just kept going throughout the rest of the season until they found out you. Do you know how, why he got away and no one else did? No, but I can tell you the experience as an actor when you're reading the script and, and everybody's getting killed and you're turning to Because <laughs> your job security rests on what happens. Oh, they're coming at me with machine guns. So, oh, I walk away. <laughs> it was it fulfilling then. Yeah, I was just going to the last mention of my character in a PDF and go, oh, it's still alive. Okay, right. I can read the script. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I thought it was always uh, interesting that he just moved. You know, I thought that was a good to the writing. Yeah. And then David, one of the best relationships other than Reese and Finch was the dark mirror version, the relationship between Elias and Scarface, the, um, which just tell us about working with, the, with Enrico and how, and then also your dynamics between Reese and Finch too, although I'm not really sure you interacted that much with Finch, but. I, 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 I sort of kind of worked with Michael the first night I shot, the first episode I was in, because uh, he was telling me, so we had a conversation, like as actors as humans, not as 
character. Um, uh, with Rico, Rico and I met, probably a lot of people have heard this story, but uh, I don't know, 25 years ago on Jeff Shoot Me, I was a guest star, and he was a series regular, and he was just a mensch. He was <laughs> what you aspire to be if you're a series regular, somebody comes to your set. You know, welcoming, warm, you know, uh, made you feel like part of the team, like, you know, you were meant to be there, not like, you're, oh, you're here for the day, nice. Um, so it always stuck in, in my head, and I went to the fitting, and he comes sauntering in, and I got my, at the time, three-year-old, I think, in a stroller. And I go, hey, he goes, hey, what are you, what are you doing? He goes, I'm doing, oh, I'm your left hand of death. He goes, oh. I, said, I see you don't remember me. He did. And <laughs> I said, but, you know, you were a series regular, and I was on the show, and you just really showed me what it was like to be a professional actor on a series. And when I was on a series, I tried to behave that way to people who came to my set. Uh, so that's kind of how it started off. And first day of working together, he just kind of came up to me, and he was sipping a coffee, and we were chit-chatting. He said, I think we're going to be friends. I said, OK. <laughs> and uh, that just sort of translated into, the I think the first thing we shot was me putting him into a car. And the next thing we shot was the meeting when he gets off the ferry and I've just punched out, let's go, and we meet. It's a long shot. And it's just what we chose to do physically was this kind of man hug thing. And it, it kind of formed the rest of the relationship. It just became this almost tender friendship. That, that once we got around to telling the backstory, everything we'd done made sense, mm -hmm. you know? But we didn't know the backstory at the beginning. We just kind of was picking it up and went along. Uh, but the, the thing I miss most about the show is spending time with them just because their friendship didn't you know. So we, we still talk and stuff, but we don't have an excuse to hang out. <laughs> And I just had a quick question about at the end of um, the delivery when you sauntered in and grabbed all the jewels in that very last scene, and then you just sauntered out and you're whistling. Was the whistling ad list or was that in the script? Whistling, I'm trying to remember. No, it was scripted. Uh, I believe that, that uh, Greg wrote the episode. Uh, he's on set. I don't remember what he was doing. I think he was directing. And so I said, what, uh, do you, any particular song you want me to, he goes, what? I said, do you, do you want me to, is a particular song you want, because I got a couple ideas, but is there a particular song you want me to whistle? And he looked at me like, I said, you wrote this, right? <laughs> so I to show it to him. He goes, oh yeah, 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 okay, hold on, man, hold on. And he and Jonah ran off, you know, and they're like, I mean, so when they came back to me with, uh, and I think that's, they, they had decided at that point that it was going to be uh, the name of the song. I, I think so. If I remember correctly. Right. But yeah, it was it was scripted, and then it almost went unscripted, and then I brought it back in. <laughs> and then I was wondering about, um, we were talking a little bit in the green rooms, You're, the three of you didn't have any scenes together all at the same time, but there were different scenes where you interacted with each other. Do you want to talk about uh, like what how that was working with each other, and, and what you think if you hypothetically were working together, like had a scene together, would there be... Scenarios you had in mind, if you were writing it yourself. I was always mad because he was handsomer than me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get confused because we would hang out uh, on the set, right. but never really interact. Um, Al and I, though, we did have a. I remember one night just yelling at you for some reason. <laughs> Um, During the scene, or, yeah. <laughs> or, in, or in my room? <laughs> During the scene, we were under a, a bridge. Oh, we're always, yeah. under always under a bridge. bridge. Right. Right. We're always under like a bridge at night in February. Yeah. Williamsburg <laughs> Bridge, where the trains every two seconds while we're trying to speak, and, and they're like, yeah, they, they plan these things where they're going to shoot. So let's shoot under a bridge that has a train going by every minute and nine seconds. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, no. Uh, Hypothetically, no, I wouldn't project what scenes that we would or would not have had. And I think it's Scarface, you had an interaction with Simmons. Well, yeah, we worked together two days, I think. Yeah. Uh, once in season two, like the only time I was on season two. And uh, then on the night of his death. <laughs> when I had to be both Scarface and Elias because we couldn't make it in. Which brings us to the sad so side of death. We, we had a we had a really fun scene under the Williamsburg Bridge. He sends me to to collect a, a rare baseball worth millions of dollars in a scam that we had. 
Instead, Jim Caviezel beats the crap out of me. <laughs> and then I go in, my arm's broken, and he beats the crap out of me onto the bridge again, and basically, <laughs> that sends me off. Did you screw up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, I was going to say that for obviously the subject, we each had very violent, bloody deaths. Um, you, Carter, got her revenge on you. Um, just, I will, and then, of course, Simmons was killed by Carter's little guardian angel. Here. <laughs> guardian, our guardian angel's guardian. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you got blown up, sadly. But I was wondering if you had a So how hard was it to do your, your death scene? Well, when you do a death scene, you're immediately thinking about your checking account. <laughs> and, um, you're using that city bank app a lot. I'm thinking like, no, no more checks. Um, no, death scenes, I, I'll tell you, it's, again, like, if you're acting properly, your, your, your brain is in this state that you, like, believe it as much as you can. So your adrenaline really flows, and you, if you're doing a drama on Broadway, you're in a bad mood most of the time. If you're doing a comedy, you're in a better mood. So uh, doing a death scene, it's, 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 it's intense. It's very, it's very intense. I mean, just imagine it. Just sit there and think about you dying and going through the physical motions of dying. It's, it's, it's not the happiest thing in the world. Well, you always have to do that, like, kind of death row, let me get the last thing out. Yeah, yeah. Thing, which is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, which is always hard to do well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of practice in my second marriage. So, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. My third. But yeah, it's uh, death scenes, and again, uh, being serious, I like to just keep these things jovial and, and let you people have fun. But you know, when you die in one of these shows, it is depressing. Besides the death scene, I mean, I love the show. I love the job. Actors love jobs. I love the people I was working with. It was gas working with these guys. And yeah, when you die, it's like it's. You know, believe me, it's depressing. Go ahead. And, and Simmons. Um the scene, um, and, and, Al, and David, you were there too. The scene, I understand that you were not all in the same room at the same time. It was just me and Bobby at yeah. the time. And then they, they had a guy sitting in the, sitting the corner. corner. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, who are you? But when Amanda <laughs> came to me and said, would you, you know, I know this is awkward, but you know, we can't be here. I'd really rather have you do the voice than the stand in. Do you mind? So I had to stand. Like, you know, I was at the camera, I would do the thing, and I kind of did a pretty good approximation. There was, I, I, I thought there was one thing. I was staring. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him do it. I went, that's, I made that same choice. Um, and then I had to, you know, come around the corner. So I, want, I want to talk about Joss's death for a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is the truth. I got to the set, and I didn't know what I was going to be doing that night. There was some closely guarded oh, secret. Wow. And I walked on, and we were rehearsing. And I saw the special effects guys um, rig rigging her with squibs. And I said, um, hey, Traji, what's up? And she's like, hey, how you doing? And I was like, what's that? And she goes, oh, the two squibs. And I was like, oh, really? I said, what happened? And she goes, oh, honey, you didn't, you didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> this is the truth. And I said, no, I didn't, because I did not know wow. what the ending. And she said, oh, honey, I get shot twice. And I was like, really? Right there? How do, you, how do you survive that? And she goes, oh, you really didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> so then I said, who shoots you? And she's like, oh. <laughs> and, and then I just got a really bad feeling. And, uh, I was doing another show at the time in uh, Charleston. And I got on the plane the next day after killing Joss. And, uh, and it said, on my dressing room in Charleston, Carter killer. <laughs> I have three older sisters. They weren't speaking to me. <laughs> There's a lot of repercussions there. Also, when uh, David killed me, uh, they shot it, so you see him strangling. You see him strangling, strangling. Ultimately, Greg called me one day. Thank you so much. It was great. He said, "Did you notice the episode of this?" Uh, yeah, but I didn't watch it. He said, "We panned away when you were struggling," and I said, "Yes, I." Am. Um, so he wanted to leave it ambiguous that perhaps something in television land makes it so that I survived it. I did not. <laughs> they were very fucking clear with me. Great, <laughs> 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 great, call me up. 
You know, and here's the funny thing. Greg's assistant is my cousin. <laughs> when Jack Warner was around, would Jack Warner's secretary's cousin get killed off in one of his pictures? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. The other thing, on a show called Rescue Me, you weren't anybody until you were a ghost. So it was, oh, yeah. it was all good. If you got killed, you were going to be a ghost. So. So it's Josh. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. People were very mad at him for, for killing Josh. Oh, my God. But 20th Century Fox sent him a car. <laughs> no, Empire, you know. Did they? I'll tell you, I think she said, you know, that was a, she's doing okay. She landed on her feet. She's a little roll, you know. Yeah. Little something. Little something. <laughs> and how was your death scene? Uh, fabulous. Uh, it was great. I mean, you know, Greg called me and uh, uh, Eric, and he got on the phone with me to talk about what they were planning to do. Um, they allowed me to kind of form some of the story. There were some questions that were left open, how I got the scar, or things like that, that I got to participate in determining. Um, and the, the day itself, it was, you know, you know, I just took a squib and we moved on. It was a story about the character and the relationship between Rico and I. And, uh, but it was still, you know, it was a sad, like Al said, it's a sad day. It was a great job. I loved working with everybody on the show. There was, I never had a bad day on the shoot. Uh, cold days, tough days, but never a bad day. The crew, which I know you saw some of the guys up here earlier, were awesome and professional and fun to be around. The writing staff was, the directing staff was. So you know, to say goodbye to that job that you really, that you really enjoyed, that it carried, that it spans, you know, three, four years. It's you know, saying goodbye to an old friend. It says. Uh, so you know, bringing a tear to my eye was not, it was no work, really. And it was funny. I uh, they mentioned the calls. I was in the car with my wife, not the second one. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I'm on speaker, and I'm all excited. Oh, you know, uh, the executive producer told me, "Wow, this is good." Serious record. Yeah. He said, you, you know, uh, you know, you're gonna die. And I was like, "Oh, Jesus." <laughs> I'm serious. I was up driving the car. I'm having a great day. He's like, oh, "You're getting killed." <laughs> but anyway, and he good. said he calls him everybody. Yeah, yeah. there too. Yeah. He called me collect. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a funny story. So uh, I was, I got a call from California. I was driving, a friend was in town. I was driving to the airport, and I had to come to the city for a screening. It was a crazy day. My phone rang. Some California number. I don't know. I don't pick it up. I move on. The next day, I'm, I'm online and on Twitter. Somebody leaked something that they had been at some talk back that, that Sunday. And Greg goes, well, how are we going to keep things interesting next season? We're going to kill some people off. I got to make a very uncomfortable call to an actor. And da -da -da -da. And I go, oh shit, that poor bastard, because it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, right? I didn't get the call on Monday. I said, I'm good. In that moment, I, I swear to God, my phone rings. It's that same number. Oh. So, fucking kidding me. So I pick it up. It's my cousin. Hi, it's Nicole from Greg Legman's office. Trying to meet you again. I go, oh. So I call him back. Took it. I said, I said, look, I'm going to make it easy on you. I think I already know what you're talking about. I know what the call's about. So. Well, I was going to open up to um, some audience questions, um, but before we do that, I did have want to ask um, Bobby. I hope I'm putting you on the spot. We ha understand that you're a volunteer firefighter in New York City, and I think it's just incredible. Um, and I was wondering if you wanted to talk at all about your work with, and also sharing work with first responders and the veterans. I'm a, a fire captain in Suffolk County, Long Island, not New York School. Oh. Um, My wife is over here. When the pager goes off at two o'clock in the morning and there's burning buildings or down power lines or gas leaks, she's the one who really uh, <laughs> uh, has to uh, experience that. Um, uh, my best friend was a fire captain in Ladder 3 downtown. He was killed on 9 11. By virtue of knowing him, uh, I think that's why I, I dedicated myself to the fire service. Um, uh, so it's been 14 years. Uh, it's great. I do EMT work, um, drive, coordinate helicopter dust-offs for uh, you know people with very serious injury, ice rescue, water rescue. It's a lot. I'm 55. I can't keep it up. Um, yesterday we were on a uh, rock march, five miles uh, around Manhattan, 
for to end suicide, uh, veteran suicide. It's a very, very touching topic. No one wants to go near it. It's, somebody said, unspeakable, and that's the problem that needs to be spoken to. <clears throat> By virtue of playing a lot of military guys, you meet these guys, they're the, the nicest, finest guys in the world. We need them. We need their experience. Um, and so, uh, you know, you just uh, gravitate toward that Gary Sinise. I'm 100% I'm sure there's 15 Gary Sinises with the amount of work he gets done for veterans and their families. And everything. It's an honor. It's a total honor. When I get out of bed at night, uh, at this time of year, it's going to be somebody maybe I know. Do you know what I mean? And there's wonderful accountability in your community. But after 9-11, HOMA, FEMA, OSHA, Homeland Security, there's so much certification that can become daunting. When you get out of bed <clears throat> and you have three buildings on fire at 1 o'clock in the morning and you have a 5 a.m. call, that gets a little daunting also. <laughs> um, but it's great. I'm, I'm honored to be able to, at this point in my life, have experienced that and, and be able to do it. Actors, it's always good to work, and you all have some current projects that you'd like to talk about. Al? Um, <laughs> uh, October 18th, which is soon, um, and the new uh, Tom Selleck, Jesse Stone, he does like a movie. Uh, right. Jesse Stone, right. 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 It's on Walmart on the uh, 18th, and then I'm in a new series called Game of Silence that comes on NBC in January. A, uh, a show called The Legions, which uh, had a brief but glorious run. Um, <laughs> I'm back at my day job uh, as uh, Lieutenant Tucker, uh, cutting uh, Delegate in uh, uh, <laughs> Special Victims Unit, uh, Aaron tomorrow night, and then I'll be back with them next week, uh, continuing in that role. Mark's hired me as his assistant. Uh, no, I just finished a movie called Central Park, which is a, uh, I guess, I mean, it's really a horror movie. It's a slasher picture. Oh, really? But it's, yeah, but it's, uh, it's smart. It's not, you know, Halloween. Uh, <laughs> young cast, uh, Ruby Modine, I don't know if you've heard that, it's Matthew Modine. It's all like the kids of, yeah. and uh, Grace Manhattan, Tim Manhattan's kid. Uh, so they're really kind of the stars, and then there's a bunch of us older people that are Kind of keeping, trying to keep them alive and not doing a very good job at it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We're in post now. We just uh, we shot the, uh, the the very last night of it. It was all night exterior nights, so that's always fun to shoot. Uh, about a month ago, so they're in post now. And the Alto movie is out now. Alto movie is out. It's you can rent it on uh, Vimeo. You can buy it on iTunes. You can. Uh, that's with uh, Diana De Garmo, myself, uh, Annabella Shiora. Alright, do you have any audience questions? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Yeah. Quick one. Uh, bloopers. If you can think about what your favorite blooper was, either scene that you were in or someone else was in, but preferably one that you were in. I'm, I'm trying to shoot at um, John Reese, and I uh, shoot at him and I shoot at him 11 times. 11 takes, and on the 12th take, I turn to run, and I hear this guy all pop. It's not a blooper, really. <laughs> and, um, the only person who witnessed this was the set medic, um, uh, Roper, Matt Roper. And he said, what was that sound? And I said, did you hear that? He said, no, actually, I felt it in my chest. And it was a herniated, it was a, actually a ruptured disc in my back. And, and I thought, you know, it was just so that was an extraordinarily uh, 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 rough night, but um, yeah. uh, Kevin uh, Chapman, uh, who actually I see once or twice a week still, uh, he and I just, I, I can't specifically remember stuff, but he's a Boston guy. If he was, if he was on the set, it was funny. <laughs> just, something funny was going to happen. He's a comic rhinoceros. He's just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he kills, he kills, he, he's, a, he's just a great guy. Specifically, I can't remember any bloopers, but just a delight to work with and be around. Yeah, I don't have well, first I want to I want to give a shout out to the crew back there. You know, these guys from the crew that work the best crew in New York. That I work in so many hours and always fun and nice and happy about it. Um, 
the um, well, I, I won't name names, but we were once shooting during UN week, and you know, during UN week, every prime minister and president is around. They've got bodyguards and Mossad and CIA and Secret Service all over the place. So we're on Park Avenue, right across from the Waldorf Astoria, where most of them stay. And one of the actors runs, we're shooting a scene, and he runs out of the building. We were supposed to cut right at the door of the building, and he's running down the street with a handgun in his hand. <laughs> this for, does you guys know about this? Oh, right, you helped us, because you have all these political connections. So anyway, to make a long story short, they sh it's 11 a.m., you know, tens of thousands of dollars, you know, trust it, they shut us down. That's, that's the, that, was the, that was my blooper. They just shut us down and sent us home. And, and this guy helped uh, get us back. <laughs> the, next, the next day they were giving us all types of problems. That's all the police commissioner's office. Hey, right. Uh, yeah, Bobby. Yeah, yeah they went to, oh, okay, yeah. He's an Irish guy. He's an Irish guy. I'm sorry, you should know about the crew. I, I've empathized with crews, you know, people getting started in the business, the production assistants, the, the ADs, and very hard job. This particular show, and I've been on a lot of television shows, this show was a bear. And I would read the script and I was like, get rid of one shootout, get rid of one explosion out of your schedule, God almighty. And you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, just the amount of work that these people were able to accomplish in a day, it was just extraordinary. And I mean, come Friday night into Saturday morning, I used my heart used to go out to the crew because there was no life, no sleep. Fratterday. Yeah. Fratterday. <laughs> you, you were either freezing or, you know, I mean, listen, as my father would say, God rest his soul, go get a real job. <laughs> but no, they, they, the, the crew was extraordinary. Uh, and, and that, it, it, it shouldn't go without saying. Right now, um, they they spoke. Spoke terribly about us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they, they were speaking about you know what it's like on set and everything, and I just wonder what were uh, did uh, the crew ever play any really good practical jokes on any of you? Because we would love to hear that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> make one up. You're gonna forget. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> No. It wasn't a kind of a ha ha. It was uh, you had a showrunner at the beginning who I had worked with. Uh, he was like the head producer, showrunner. And I worked with. What's that? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I worked with this guy uh, 20 years ago in Canada. Very quiet, high guys going into. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> I didn't even recognize the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you for instance, we're in the sub basement. It's the last night of shooting on the final episode of the first season. So this is it. This is it. Uh, we're running out of time. They, I shouldn't tell this. <laughs> 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 so anyway, we're running out of time. I mean, to, to me it made, well, so anyway, he, he's like, I want everybody over here. Everybody over here. Okay, I want the B camera. That's another camera. Upstairs in the lobby, get upstairs in the lobby, get preset for the next scene, and, and, and get up there. Okay, B camera up there. Now, everybody else, A camera's over here, A camera's over here. Does everybody understand? And everybody says, yeah. He goes, okay, where's B camera? <laughs> <laughs> up in the lobby, you just sent them. <laughs> no, I'm looking down. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, 100, 150 people standing there, like, well, I heard him say. <laughs> It was extraordinarily pressured, so there was not a lot of hijinks between anybody, really. I mean, you know, we so were all just... you never found a note that stuck to your head or anything? <laughs> That's <in> mine. Because <laughs> 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 that could get you. <laughs> Simmons wasn't a really touchy-feely guy. <laughs> Uh, this one's for David. When you were being beat to a pulp at the end, yes. how did they make you? Yeah, Tony will be here in a minute. Is Tony here? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. How did they make you look so puffy? You look like Marlon Brando on your father. I ate a lot of pasta that yeah. <laughs> No, uh, it, uh, they so just, it was just makeup. There, there was a crack makeup crew. I mean, they really, and uh, it was Toy, actually, that did it. Um, uh, you know, and she sat there and 
painstakingly through the process, altered it, and I mean, I have beginning, middle, and end pictures yeah. of it. And it's yeah, just, they were just so huge. Stunning. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just did. They, she did great. It was it, it was all shading. Mm -hmm. Wow. It was all shading. There was no prosthetics. Um, wow. It was all shading. Yeah, I was. I mean, I looked at it. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not like somebody missed it and actually hit me and I swelled up or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The magic of movies. Anyone else? Okay. I have a question, David. One of the best scenes that we've, we've seen was when uh, you and Jamie Hector, who played Link, were talking about taking over groups and your crews. Can you talk a little bit about that scene? Uh, I don't know. It was just, uh, you know, it was leading up to the death. And I just, uh, Jamie's a really great actor, just very generous and very present. And he and I just kind of shot the shit about it and what we felt we were trying to say to each other what was underneath it uh, and then I believe the director came in and kind of shot that all to shit but we still <laughs> but we said well yeah we're gonna sit like this and we're gonna do yeah we'll do it like yeah um, but the, the kind of the the underlying intent of what was being communicated between us like what you know what kind of conversation we we're gonna have uh, we just kind of sussed it out with, and it just like outside just kind of Speak the words, just trying to stay out of the way, and you know, let it be there. I can just, I yeah, can just ask a question. Uh, yeah, I got a big voice. <laughs> um, we've talked about the deaths of all three of your characters, but as uh, I think Jonah Nolan and others have said, there's no such thing as being truly dead on this show. People come back in flashbacks. Uh, we've already had in Terra Incognita the uh, flashback to uh, Turney in his earlier days with Carter, but I'd like to hear from each of you what would you like to see in a flashback for your characters if there was dating one. Carter. Dating Carter. <laughs> 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 what wife number? <laughs> HR stands for? Human Resources. Is that right? Yeah. And it said that in the show? Yeah. We made it up. Wow. Wow. Remember, they just left it out. I asked, actually. We made it up for you guys. <laughs> I would go around. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there really is no official. No, I thought it would harken back to an old uh, uh, police designation for homicide robbery. But I asked, like, you know, uh, great. <laughs> is it a lot for me to ask what HR means? But I never really knew. Thought you might. You know what I was always upset about? Like, why the hell didn't my number come up that day? And they saved me. <laughs> There actually was a website on the internet, I don't remember what it was, where I wanted to get a lot of background about the show. And it went point through point, who was who, uh, for example, who was Dominic, what was coming up, um, and it had what HR meant there. So there actually is quite a bit of information. I don't remember the website, I wish I did. Yeah, what was it? That's what I was, guys. Media. What, media yeah. what um, shows or what do you guys follow on a weekly or on a basis? What types of shows do you actually like? What do you watch on TV? Uh, I watch a lot less than I used to because I've got three boys, five, eight, and eleven. So I, yeah, you know, occasionally my wife and I'll put the TV on to watch. You know, we'll binge watch stuff occasionally, but usually by the first half hour we're asleep. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know. We, uh, Walking Dead, I've been getting into. I want to be on Walking Dead. I just don't care if it comes out. Like, you know, it's not. I wait until I hear like people say how fabulous things are, and then I binge watch yeah. kind of Game of Thrones, House of Cards. I was on. I don't know if they said yeah, it, but I was on House of Cards. It's a really good show. Um, I, I loved Mad Men the first few years. Anything quality that you know just makes you think and doesn't just kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> My wife is here, and she'll vouch for this, I watch no episodic television, good. My son said one day, because somebody asked him that question, what did your dad watch? And he said, well, he watches a lot of MMA, mixed martial arts. 
He said, but if you're in Alaska trying to survive, he will watch you. <laughs> 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 this is from Rachel. Wicked Tuna. <laughs> Bear Grylls. Grylls. <laughs> Gold Rush. I love that stuff. I Deadly Catch. <laughs> I can get you that Bear Grylls show. No, no, no. No, no, no. Any other audience questions? Yeah, I have a question. You mentioned House of Cards, and um, I've seen. I've seen you guys in many shows. I'm terrible with, oh, it's that guy. <laughs> He's great. Um, as, as a character actor, are you finding that the quality of roles that are available to you are increasing? Like, I feel like we're in a really great age of television. How is that affecting you as a working actor, all three? Well, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Back in the 70s, you had three opportunities, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And for the most part, you had to be really good. You had to be really good to handle to you know to handle a show. And now there's a thousand stations, but cable has enabled us to have the you know the, the lack of censorship, so they could explore areas of life which weren't really explored on ABC, CBS, and NBC, like honest sex and honest and you know murder and much more in depth. You know, it's it's more real. So you have these great shows like House of Cards and The Sopranos and. And then you have the Kardashians, so you know, it's, it's, it's just this giant scope and hopefully you know, you get on the good shows. Like my philosophy is I almost take everything and hope that every third or fifth or sixth is a good show. That's just me. Yeah, yeah it's just, I mean, it, it, because of the way the story's being distributed, content is being distributed now, um, there is, I remember, I remember when reality television started. I was out in LA, and I was, you know, there was a shot of you know being a guest star on this, or you might test for that episode, that series that's coming up, or, and then it all went away for a little while because uh, reality television came. So half the, half of those three opportunities were gone now, and the movie stars were doing all those things now, uh, and then all of a sudden it opened up again with, you know, now with Netflix, but with cable producing their own content, and they're allowing also writers. Like I was saying, to explore stuff that they, you couldn't do it on network television because you were kind of uh, handcuffed by your corporate sponsors, and now that's not true anymore. So you know, people are, people that didn't get to tell epic tales are getting to tell it, even if they're intimate and epic. So yeah, I think the, I think the quality of work that's available with it and the quantity of it has expanded. How do you what? Get into character. Uh, they, they put the scar on my face. I'm not. That's happened. Did it change from one side to the other? No, never did. No. no, they made the mistake of putting it on the side of my face that the camera, for some reason on the show, the camera never gets that side of your face. Just the way it's shot, and just, uh, it's always so. They were constantly hit the first season, asked me to cheat my face to get the scar. So that's why I was always looking around. <laughs> character choice. Uh, the, the question was how do you get into character? Yeah. yeah. The, I play a lot of like bad cops. Do you know what I mean? But there was some, there was a quality to person of interest, whereas it was this comic book kind of, you know, uh, uh, melodramatic, making the unbelievable. It was, it was a heightenedness. And, when I would read Simmons and how diabolical, and I thought, er, you know, I'm going to kick it up. Um, and there was an archness to him. Like, God, you know, any, in reality, this man wouldn't last two minutes, you know, in any institution. So it was, the writing allowed for the, for the, uh, uh, the hyper realism or the hyper diabolical. <laughs> of, of the character, so um, it was easy. It was fun. It was fun. That's what it was. I have a question. Um, so, David, when you were playing the cop in the beginning, do you happen to know if your character was originally a cop, and, or were you just the, the, because the, you were on the impression I, I got was simply that that was one of the many guys as he could inhabit in order to, you know, there was a partnership with HR, and that they would allow me to. Have um, you know, I mean, when I was handed the pages to audition for it, they don't tell you anything. You know, I'm a cop, and then I'm punching out a cop, and you know, they were being, being very, very hush-hush about what the whole 
and the show hadn't aired yet. Uh, but yeah, no, I never got the impression that he had ever been a police officer. Okay. Actually, he just had a fancy suit hanging in his closet. But there is one. Al, I have a question. Your character just started out as kind of a minor cop, just regular, occasionally appearing. So you didn't know from the beginning, or did you know from the beginning? I didn't know. I had this benign role. I was a homicide detective, and my function in, in the first season was basically, it was usually in the teaser or Act 1, where I would explain to Carter what the situation was with this particular homicide, and that would kick off the story. And then they started to expand it, where I was part of HR, that was a lot of fun, and then I was, um, yeah, they just expanded it as uh, as, uh, as it went along. I mean, luckily, I, they liked me, I guess, and thought there was something they could go with the character. Possibly recurring. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, yeah, I didn't think he said that the first time. I was just like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, like, oh, you know. But I like the show a lot. Al, I have a question. This, when you came back last season for 420 with Carter, what was that like doing the flashbacks? That was a lot of fun. Because it was, a, if those were really well written scenes, right? There was a lot there. There was a lot. And um, we talked about what our relationship was in the past that we really didn't talk about before with all the scenes that we did that what so I, I I enjoyed that a lot and she was you know she Empire was already a hit. She was very happy to be there. It was a very festive week. And um we shot in the in the in Leona Helmsley's old home. You know the Helmsley uh the, the Park Lane. Forty six stories on Central Park South. Well they had a duplex on the top with a pool. So, so now it rents, I forgot, it was something ridiculous, like 20000 a day, 25000 a day. So that was where we shot this uh, scene. That was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, we just, we just had a great time. It was very easy. It just flowed, and, uh, and we were both happy to be there. All right, we have another, a couple questions, and then um, if you guys are OK with it, would you mind doing some autographs and pictures um, of Absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Okay, so maybe like two more questions in that one? Right. Yeah, hi, Al. Um, hi there. Um, hi. You were talking about kind of getting that phone call, uh, you know, where you're going to, like, you know, you haven't got a job, like, tomorrow. Say that again. I can't hear you. Oh, you're here. I'm sorry. Oh, the phone call where I don't have a job tomorrow, <laughs> or I'm dead. <laughs> Press the button. Yeah, you were talking about, um, you know, getting that phone call. Um, and you go, oh, you want to have another paycheck tomorrow. Um, how much notice did it give you, like, in the actor world? Because I had that recently. I, I kind of went to work. I was in there for three years and kind of went to work and I was like, opened up my email. Boss came in and said, hi, morning, how are you? And then looked at my email and it was like, uh, oh, come to a meeting at half past one, please. And it was like, okay. So, you know, it's like the like, George Clooney movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had like, like a month. Up in the air. Just, yeah. So like 6,000 people, so it's like, how much notice do you get? Do you like, you know, one day and then you have to go your agent tomorrow? Not much notice. Uh, it was, I can't remember exactly, it was a while ago, but um, I'd say maybe a week and a half, if that, you know, the, the, I was set, set to be, I didn't get the script yet, so I was set to be in the episode, so maybe two weeks tops. The Sopranos um, uh, notice. Uh, can I tell you one quick story before we go here? Are we, you guys Sopranos watchers also? The people yeah. watching Sopranos from the board. But that whole first year was shot and completed before it ever was on the air. So no one had any idea that show was going to be that successful. No one, it was just a nice, local, interesting mafia show. No one had, and the only famous person on it was Lorraine Bracco. Everyone else was unknown. Jim Gandolfini did Crimson Tide and his role in Get Shorty was the biggest role he did. It was basically unknown actors. Everyone was having a fabulous time. But the scripts were phenomenal. So David Chase calls me into his office, episode seven. It's a 13 thing. And he, and he says to me, um, he goes, you, you know you're going to die at the end of this, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking. Like, I almost started to cry. And he has six episodes yeah, left. And I had no idea what the show was going to be, but it was the, the scripts were so good and we were having such a good time. So he's like, why are you so upset? So I said, I don't know. I said, the, the scripts are great. I really think this thing's going to be a hit. And David Chase, these were his exact words. 
you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't talk a lot anyway. Like, he thought about it. He goes, well, because I don't know if America's going to get the humor. And then he pondered for a bit. And he said, and besides, if we get picked up, I have nothing else to say on this matter. <laughs> Six seasons and $20 million a year later, he came up with something to say. <laughs> but, um, but he meant it. Because if you look at the first season, it's all about this guy and his mother. Yeah. It's about a mafia guy and his mother. That's what it's about. Yeah. That it, it stood alone. It, 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 if we didn't get picked up, it, it would have stood. So anyway, it's terrible getting killed on a show. And one other quick thing. I'm the first person that that happened to. Stop and think, John. In the history of friggin' television, until me, I swear this is true. When you run a TV series, you run a TV series. Nobody got killed. JR came back. It was unheard of. <laughs> when, when you were on an American television series, you had a job. And after five years, you were a millionaire after syndication. Yeah. I'm the first freaking guy. And then after me, it was the girl on 24, Leslie Hope. We talked about it. We start, The Sopranos started this trend of killing series regulars. It's terrible. <laughs> Audition, I'm sorry, I say, audition that had them say, yeah, this is the guy we want. Do you, can you speak to us a little bit about that? Anyone first? Okay. When I shook the producer's hand, I had a $100 bill in my hand. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, it's a good question, because I read for the pilot. And had I gotten that role, I would have been dead in the pilot. I read for the guy in the back of the limousine that, that remember? Um, still, oh. still, still, still. Oh, the guy that first goes, that first goes running around with, he gets popped. Yeah, right, and he baby. gets killed in that pilot, and he's got the guy in the back seat of the limousine. I saw it. But anyway, that would have been it. That would have been on one show. So I didn't get that role. And then a couple of weeks later, I just get a call. They want to give you a role as a cop. You know, it was like, a, it was one scene. So had I got that role, so that's how I got it. I don't know what they, you know, why, I, but whatever. <laughs> Um, and I, I did an audition, they called me, they asked me, would you like to come on the show as a corrupt police officer? <laughs> I don't know, it would be kind of a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have another corrupt policeman in me, so. But yeah, they were very kind and it was, it was fun. It was, uh, I just, you know, Mark Sachs uh, has cast me in a number, he's responsible for me, meeting my wife really, because he cast me on the team. To a kind of support. Um, so, 25 years later, he call, he's you know bringing me in to do a guest star on this, guest star on that. He brings me in. It's a co-star thing, and it's very cryptic. It's like you know, I open a PDF. I, it's like a line. Next, a line. That's it. There's nothing. He's a cop. He's, a, he's very you know disjointed. And I thought, what's Man, this is what it's reduced to now? I'm just like, I got the, the one line thing. <laughs> my wife goes, look, you idiot, it's Mark. Read it, read it over again. And then I realize there's three or four of the pages. I go, there's only one line, but there's something going on. There's something weird. You know, it wasn't. It didn't say this guy is not a cop. He works for a mobster. He didn't explain anything. <coughs> I don't remember what I did. I think I did, after I did the punch, I sucked blood and spit the guy that I, something, I did something weird. And I just felt him go, oh, that was good. <laughs> and then you get the phone call, and you, you know, that's it. I don't know, you know, like, you'd have to ask the producers, like, why they thought me as opposed to the 12 other guys that came in. Uh, you know, I don't know. It was, in my case, it was because the guy they wanted wasn't available. Yeah. <laughs> almost always, almost always. <laughs> almost always. Uh. Well, thank you all for coming. It's been an honor and a privilege to talk to you guys, and I really Did everybody go to Comic-Con? Yes. 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 Why were, did, did, uh, did Jim and Chappie like uh, buy those jackets together? Looks <laughs> <laughs> like it. Looks like it. Right? Am I wrong? They were like matching jackets? Yep, matching jackets. <laughs> There's going to be an else to play there. <laughs> uh, so, as far as um, the line, though, Jim, we don't know 
don't want to, um, if there's a very limited area over there, so let's try to go row by row. Um, there's a center table there. If you walk along, and you, if, I, I don't have things, you know, if you want to use your program or whatever, you brought something to autograph, um, and then go out that side or it, it gets very crowded. Yeah. 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 Yeah.